Hey guys, what's up? It's Jaeger262 and welcome back to Armored Warfare Vehicle Showcases. Today, I have the most hated vehicle in Armored Warfare up for review. And, well, it's a part of the series of the worst tanks to play or worst tanks to encounter. And the reason this vehicle is so hated is that it is one of the most notorious AI bots in the game. Of course, I'm talking about the FV-438 Swingfire, that's worth just Swingfire. This thing is a monster. It has 820 average damage doing a typical ATGM hit of 900 to 1000 damage every time it strikes. Now, the way it's balanced in the game versus how the AI bot operates is completely different. And that's why it's so hated. The bot can be seen at tier 5, tier 6, and tier 7. And the reason that's important is that because tier 4s can encounter this thing and it will one shot them, and tier 7s can encounter this thing, and its damage that it deals in AI, in AI battles or PvE battles is determined by the top tier. So if you're tier 4 and you're rolling around with some tier 6s because you got an unfavorable matchup and you see a swing fire, it's going to roll. 8 to 900 every time you're probably going to get one shot. And so it is hated because before they made the ATGM changes in update 0 0.28, this vehicle could fire upon you and hit you even after death. And it could penetrate almost any vehicle frontally. It was ridiculous. It didn't matter if you were, say, top tier in something like a T90 or a Merkava fighting a tier 5 swing fire, it would still penetrate you and it would still do a roll between seven to 800 damage. It won't get up to the thousands, but it'll still hit you really hard. And so, not only did that, you know, that dissuades players from attacking them or going after them on the battlefield, but it just became an impossible vehicle, even with its thin armor, to really go up against. Now, the actual vehicle was developed, I believe, at the end of the 60s by the British as one of the first ATGM vehicles to really enter combat like the Russian IT-1 and the missile that it fired the swing fire was powerful but it wasn't as powerful as this and it really was just meant to be well like it is here a tank destroyer that sits in the back and you know supports infantry in this game the AIs play it so aggressively it is abominable. However, if you look at the stats here, that's very different. Now, on paper, it all looks the same. 820 average damage, 625 penetration, 4600 damage per minute. But then you get to the reload time, 20 seconds. And that is insanely long. And that 19.23 you're seeing there is taken into account that I'm using Freya, which gives me 15% faster reload or something she has a, she has three skills to slow reload down and so you're gonna look at a longer reload almost twice the reload of the challenger one or the Sheridan if you can believe it and with no armor and no real way to spot vehicles you're gonna you're doomed I mean the view range is only 410 meters which is really great if you can move this vehicle into different positions and kind of mess around with it but you can't even though it has 37 percent cam plus just a giant box it's going to be seen it's not that fast um 52 degrees hold reverse not bad um and it weighs 14 kilograms so it's pretty light but all in all it's going to be so hard to find ways to make that reload time not leave you completely vulnerable and even then, the flight speed of the missiles, I have it here, is only 185 meters a second. That is incredibly slow. And what you'll see is, when you're playing it, and playing against it in bots now, you'll see the missiles come towards you just like you always did, and they'll hit you, or you can avoid them, you'll see that they're going pretty slow. But early on, the swing fire, when it was going up again, when you were going up against it in PvE, you would hear it, and you would see, be able to see the missiles come at you, but they would be going so fast. Or, they would do this really weird thing, which only happened to me a couple of times, so I'm not mentioning it, but if anybody else has had this happen, comment down below. 
where the missiles would start coming towards you, and just as you begin to evade, they speed up and just hit you right away. Like, almost as soon as you look at it, you're hit. Now, that didn't happen enough for it to be a problem for me, but if it does happen to you, that used to be a problem. It probably won't happen anymore. But when you're playing this vehicle, and you gotta deal with 185 meters per second going against PvP gameplay, or not going against, but going against other players, that's so slow, you're almost gonna miss every time. And the reason that it's like that is just, you know, there's other vehicles in the game that have really slow missile, you know, um, almost all of them. The M1134, which is all missiles, the NM142, the C13 TUA, but they all have really great penetration values. And they're all really consistent. Or they're like the Terminator tank destroyers, which have 30 millimeter cannons to back them up when they're reloading. You're basically gonna be waiting 20 seconds to fire these two missiles and there's going to be such a slim chance you actually hitting anything so a lot of players get in this vehicle thinking it's going to be the absolute laser guided laser accurate super beast that you see in pve and it's actually just a flop of a tank destroy it's a hard grind that doesn't really go anywhere because the vehicle you get next is the warrior which while it relies heavily on the milan missile doesn't play anything like this so it's just a very weird vehicle very weird place in the tech tree and it's hated because when you fight it you get screwed when you're playing against bots and when you play it against other people or other bots you get screwed so no matter what you do the swing fire in armored warfare is only here to punish players and that's why i believe it is the most notorious vehicle in the game so the, <laughs> we're gonna play it today and just emphasize that point see if i can wreck some people in pvp or in turn if i will just keep getting shut down but before we do that quick comparison better damage than the c13 but worse penetration like i was talking about worse dpm because it has that faster reload gets way more hit points better armor it's faster more maneuverable but its view range is worse but that's because it's an active tank destroyer and so that's the newest tier 6 tank destroyer and i think it's the only one that really compares double missile tank destroyer so that's why I compared it to this. I could compare it to tier 7s, but like I said in my previous videos, I don't like comparing low tier vehicles to high tier counterparts. Because while you might see that some low tier vehicles are better, which is possible, in general I feel that all high tier vehicles, at least in Armored Warfare, they just get their stats stacked or buffed because of their tier upgrade. And so they'll just be a little bit better. However, we could try it with the NM142 because that plays exactly like the C-13. And so, again, way less damage. These are the top-down missiles, so let me go stock build. 760 at 800 millimeters penetration, better DPM. So see, that's what I mean. It's almost, it's exactly like the C-13, it's just all the numbers are a little bit higher just because it's tier seven. But no matter what happens, even though it looks like the swing fire does do more damage, the sustainability of that rate of fire and the penetration of those missiles is so bad and so inconsistent, it sucks. So thank you so much for watching, and stay tuned for the gameplay, because it's going to be rough. Alright, so we're on Kodiak in the swing fire. This is not a good map, and as you'll see, no matter what I do in this game, you'll kind of get an idea of how slow this vehicle We get a good idea of how this vehicle operates in PvE, and it's pretty terrible. It's worse than in PvP, which you'll see later. It fires too slow to do any kind of damage in competition with other players. And as you'll see in a few moments, not only do AI target this one fire pretty hard because it's such a soft target, but things will just disappear. No matter what happens, your missiles will disappear mid-flight, they won't go anywhere, you'll be on a target and it'll just go away. And I don't mean like it's not spotted anymore, it's just all of a sudden you can't penetrate it. It's just a lot of little weird nuanced things that wouldn't happen in a normal vehicle. And in most games it's because the swing fire is launched or the missiles just go straight into the air, they lose guidance too fast if you try to move the missile onto a target. But in this game, at least at one point, a missile literally just disappears, it doesn't go anywhere. And so you'll get to see that this is a really bad vehicle, it's just not good. 
when you're playing it. Again, I launch a missile, doesn't go anywhere, and the enemy, you know, the other players are able to get secure that kill. There's more vehicles coming. I try to target any of them, but it'll probably be the same thing. The missiles will just get eaten by something. By what? I don't know. But it's that just having them go straight up into the air like that really sucks. So that was a good hit for 906. One shot that AFB. We'll try to go for that one, but it's already dead by the time we fire because we can't. Again, we can't compete with a launcher that points straight at a target. Not only will missiles hit the target faster, but ours are so much slower that wasting two seconds going straight up before they go into any target is going to be impossible really to do competitive damage in this vehicle. And so I'm trying to circumvent this by going to an area early, but you got to remember, you can't play this vehicle in close quarters. So as I'm just, you know, coming around, I'm trying to look for a position where I can fire on that helipad to my right and still be far away enough to hit him and then out of nowhere we get spotted by all these bots I don't think any of them hit us we almost get hit by a couple of missiles but it's all the there's and nothing to really do you here. gotta wait for Identified. the C-13 to Hostile spot tank. and then hope to god he doesn't take all the kills and I don't mean like he's stealing kills from me I just mean again because this vehicle is so slow he's able to do more it runs into me, we're both backing up. I'm trying to find a good shot. I'm looking for vehicles that are staying still because as soon as you... And that 1,000 damage, that was easy. Oh, nice object 430. But as soon as vehicles start moving, you start moving the missiles to target them. Unlike in the M1134, even the C-13, you won't be able to control that one. And while the swing car does have amazing missile control, for some reason, as if you have to move your missiles onto a moving target, it'll miss every time like it just did. Now we're taking hits on that reload, and then I get to PvP, you'll see that the reload actually feels and operates at about 10 seconds, instead of 20 and a half. And right now I'm reloading at, I think, 8 hard. Either way, it's too long. It's too long. And so you'll see these vehicles. I'm relying solely on the C-13's ability to defend us because there's no way my missiles can hit any target closer, that close. They have to be at least as far away as the other sibling fire. Who I targeted solely Identify target. Oh, fire. But you see that? That missile went nowhere. It never lands. I don't know where it went. It doesn't hit anything in the air. It just disappears. That is something you have to watch out for a PvE with the swing fire. Just it's almost like the vehicle is haunted by bugs. There's just little things that'll happen that, oh, your missile's gone, or oh, the reload's shorter or longer at random. Yeah, it's just, it's a very strange vehicle to play. Uh, and here's another instance where I launch it at a vehicle. I don't think I hit it. I hit the vehicle in front of it. For 700 and that's kind of how it goes is that you're going to get lower damage than you normally would because you're going to hit either the wrong vehicle or somebody else is going to steal more damage from you just because of faster. So there's no real good way to play this tank in these situations. Now again, situation is important. Kodiak is not the best map because you can't choose maps anymore on where you like to play it. You're going to have to play it everywhere. Here's another one where all of a sudden the tank disappears. It's still spotted. I have no idea where it is. The missile doesn't go anywhere. But what I was going to say is right now with the new update, the map selection process has not only completely changed, but is wrecked. So you're pretty much at random. So I... They, and then that's another thing that I'm showcases because I'm trying to show you how can you play this vehicle effectively. Or, and that, that is a big problem. That vehicle was way far away enough for me to hit. For some reason, the missile doesn't go low enough. That's a fluke, but it happens at random. If this vehicle is very inconsistent. That's why it's so hard to play. You can learn how to play it and be really good at it and still be bad at it. Like, see, that missile just went straight into the air for no reason. I don't know why. I can't explain that. Maybe because I wasn't aiming at anything at the time. But anyway. 
I would never, at least before update 0 create, would never take this vehicle onto any map like this, any mission like Kodiak, anywhere where you have to go through objectives one by one and kind of like play in stages. It can't do it. I'm trying so hard right now, 4000 is a really low damage pull for tier 6, and even lower for tier 6 tank destroyer. And I can't do more, it's just, it's not possible. And this is something you'll see here. I, um, I get nailed by that swing fire that's behind a building when it shoots me. But its missile is able to go up over the building and down onto me while it's moving. And that's why this is one of the most hated in the game. Because that should be impossible. Sure I'm playing the same game. I know that that's impossible to do, but the bots can do it. And I don't mean the fact that the bots can hit you on the move. Obviously they can do that, they're bots. I mean that he shot a missile clear over a building, lost guidance, and then was able to bring guidance back down onto it, destroyed it. Now again, that could just be a fluke, that could be a mistake in the programming, or that could be a mistake in how I'm watching this replay. It could have been lag, and I just didn't see it because I wasn't paying attention to that swing fire. So, I'm not saying that the swing fire in PvE is a god. I'm just saying there's going to be weird situations that anybody who's ever played against it knows. It just seems to really dominate. But not when you play it. And so that's why I would recommend this tank. I understand why it's the most hated. I initially got it a while ago. About four or five months ago I got it to start grinding to the warrior. And just to say, you know, maybe people are wrong, maybe it's not so bad, as long as you play, like, Quarterback, Umbrella, um, oh, Snakebite, missions where you're, you know, they're sniper-oriented, you'll be fine. And that wasn't true. It was better than playing missions like these, but you were still too slow to actually reach the target area on time to affect that damage. And so because of that, it just, it's not a good vehicle. To play in any situation here. I would actually recommend playing it in PvP more because at least you'll start doing more damage. Human players will stay in front of you longer than bots. Uh, your team's going to be more afraid. Anyway, that was a victory. Good work, Black we Company. did do we didn't stop them, 4,000 we damage, which is again really low. It puts us in third place. And waiting for the stats to load. Yeah, 93,000 credits, 3,000 experience, so not bad. But stay tuned for the PvP gameplay. That's for this vehicle. Spawning into pipelines on assault, just defending. This is a pretty good matchup. This is exactly where the swing fire wants to be in PvP. Top of the team, defending a cap from far away with lots of them to snipe. Alright now I'm moving to the J8 area which is a favorite for TVs. I'm just gonna sit there and kind of wait for enemies and there's a couple already being spotted. Now a few things I forgot to mention about this vehicle that might impact how you perceive or how you play it. First, the ATGMs go straight up not out like a normal launcher and so I was playing a game in the city you know, on a city map earlier before this one which it didn't make the recording and both shots I made went straight into buildings because I wasn't paying attention I forgot that fact and so that makes it really hard and that's what adds to the ATGM's flight time as soon as you launch a missile and that guy just blind fired us and their enemy team continues to blind fire the spot because again it is a favor for snipers they don't hit anybody but it is crazy that they got my tracks at all but yeah it's going to be about a second to two seconds where the missiles are straight up before you know it gets on its flight path where you're guiding it to so because of that it's a little wonky to play it's a little difficult in this matchup it doesn't matter and we actually get some pretty good hits like i didn't think that this c13 was going to peak back up but we hit him for 985 953 and my screen's really small right now on these replays so I can't always tell but we hit him for 953 which is a great hit and that's you know you saw how slow it was it's no different than playing any other missile tank destroyer but 
we, you know, the guidance on this, that's the one strong point. The missile guidance on the swing fire is incredible. You have a longer range of missile controllability, and we just did 1,015 damage to the T-72, or T-64, sorry. Those are huge numbers, and that's why people hate going up against this tank. And as you just saw with the reload, that's the second thing we have to mention. Like every other ATGM tank destroyer, this one will start reloading as soon as the missile launches. So, depending on how long it takes you to aim, and how long it takes you to fire, it'll feel like it's only a 10 second reload. At least it did for me. Now, we try to blind fire the macaque there. We're going to do that throughout this game. We're going to try to blind fire enemies because, again, the missiles are so slow that the enemies, again, disappear. However, we get lucky because he gets spotted again by our team, and boom. 1087, that is the largest hit of the game. And so now we're going to continue to play this position and just wait for the Magak to get spotted again or wait for the Chieftain to get spotted again. There's an Abrams over there. But this is what I was talking about. He got lucky that time by hitting it, but by the time the missile got close to him, he was able to notice it and turn his gun towards us effectively blocking the missile. So I do a quick intra-clip reload, waiting for this Abrams to kind of like pop out again. And he gets this, and this is pretty much how this tank is going to play. It's going to be a little boring, because you really, at least I did, you might, you don't have to. This is just how I play it. I wait till I get really clear shots, because the velocity is so short, or so short, <laughs> so slow. That I need to make sure there's a vehicle on the open. You can see the Abrams. He's able to notice us and back up and effectively block that shot. That's the worst thing to feel. It could happen to any ATGM destroyer. It's not just the swing fire, but the swing fire is again so slow that most enemies will see it coming right away. It can effectively evade the missile before you ever have a chance to do any damage. And that's why I leave this gameplay, or that's why I chose this gameplay, because no matter how many times. I try to fire on the Abrams, always moving, and just like that, you have no chance. And I'm sure, you know, there's, you know, people are going to say, oh, that's the same thing as a C-13, that's the same thing as the M1134, or the NM442, any tank can move out of the way, any tank can evade a missile, blah, 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 you're right, you're right, but... All those vehicles are direct fire launchers. You can fire them at close range, you can fire them faster. They don't go straight up in the air until, see, just like that, two seconds before it came back down and the vehicle is already dead. So, combined with the slow 195 meters a second, this tank is ineffective at really hitting vehicles of any kind on the move or otherwise pulling back because there's this Abrams that's pushing pretty aggressively and I thought he was going to spot us but he didn't and you'll see what I mean when I say you can fire other ATGMs at close range and be effective whereas this thing because they shoot straight up it's impossible I'm going to try to support my teammate here in the Magok and fire on that Abrams but I'm not going to have much of a chance, as you'll see. The missiles do go towards their target, but... It's... Honestly, just the way the launcher is shaped. Just how it operates, which is how, you know, the swing fire really was. Um... It makes it really hard to play. The good news is, as you see a lot in this game, and a lot in the next one, I tend to aim from very far away. I don't zoom in. And that's because when the excuse me when the missile shoots straight up like that, you can hide behind rocks and cover. You can pretty much put your vehicle in any position you want as long as it's not a big rock like the one I'm next to right now. And the missiles will still go over it and hit their targets. So that's how you see me aiming from where I'm at without moving. So you'll see it go all the way out and swing back around and by that time the Abrams had moved and he's gone. So now I try to aim in instead of relying on just my reticle 
It doesn't work out. We're spotted. I don't want to get hit by the C-13s that are out there. I don't want to... And <laughs> I do get hit. I stayed spotted for too long. And... Again, that's one of those things. That missile was probably flying the entire time I was moving around. And it just, by chance, hit me. But... Even so, we try to hit this a um, this Sheridan while it's on the move, but we don't. At least I don't. Put, I don't think I did. I have to check the post game stats. Um, can't hit that Sheridan. It's moving too fast. And so this is pretty much how the swing fire is. You gotta pick your shots, and that's why it's hated so much. Is that yes, once it does make the shots. It does a crazy amount of damage, but it takes so long for the missile to actually get to the target. I mean, look at that, the thing just goes forever. That it doesn't really perform, it doesn't get kills. It, and, again, it could just be me in, a, in this particular matchup. Don't take it at the face value, like this is how Swing Fire will always play. But I've played the Swing Fire enough to know that this is generally how it goes. Super slow super awkward to aim and so you'll find yourself in this situation just pulling back waiting 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 firing missiles hitting nothing waiting waiting and so it's ultimately a boring tank to play because it's so difficult and that's honestly why I think a lot of people hate it why I kind of hate it this gameplay really, um, hold on, did I make my third shot already? Yeah, I did. So in this gameplay, I'll tell you right now, nothing else happens. So I'm just going to leave the rest of it up here to talk a little bit more about why the swing fire, I pretty much covered it. Why the swing fire is so bad, why it's so awkward, and a big part of it is... It doesn't carry over its AI counterpart, so it doesn't do any of the things that... Like, if I was an AI bot right now, I'd be shredding all these players, but I can't do it. And for anybody who looks at this and wonders, but don't you learn how to do this before? You, know, you have the Visal that comes at Tier 5 with the tow missile. It's like the BBL. Or... Actually, I think it's like... Those are the ones besides any other anties. So yeah, get destroyed pretty easily there. Anyway, my point is, is that because of the way that the missiles are set up, like I already said, it's not direct, you don't actually learn how to play any type of vehicle like this. It's the only one of its kind in the game. And that pretty much hinders it, makes it really awkward to play. This is pretty much the end of the game here. Uh, this Stingray just gets destroyed. He was camping in the back behind me. Don't know why shouldn't do that but yeah ends in a defeat do 3,000 damage get 48,000 credits and only 1500 experience which puts us almost at the bottom of the team not a great tank to play we're way below however we did do fourth place in damage so we did do almost the most damage but it's just it's just not a great tank to play you'll see in the next game where it's more waiting than anything on Salzburg that it's just not it's not an effective tank destroyer my opinion. like to compete now with the C-13 or as it was competing before with the LAV-600 it's no contest there's no way that this vehicle could ever do anything right now we're bottom tier which is where you never want to be in this but yeah, that's just me not knowing how to drive. I wasn't paying attention to looking at my phone. Um, you never want to be in this position because that penetration value that didn't exist in the last game we were fighting only tier 6s is, is going to exist even less, if that makes sense here. It's going to be way harder to get hits. In fact, I don't think I get any hits this game. And again, I'm just throwing it up there because I want to show you why do people hate this tank. Because it's not a bad tank destroyer, don't get me wrong, it's missiles are great, it has a great control over them, I already mentioned that. But it's just so slow and so awkward. See, he's able to pull back before my missile hits and it hits a rock or something, I don't know what detonated it there prematurely. And so you can't really see everything in the missile's flight path and correct for it, it's too long. And you'll see the BBP 
fire both of its missiles right now and yeah it hits one of them and misses the other but you see how fast those were going so to anybody out there who's like oh any ATG on launch you know fire slow if it's a tank destroyer yeah that's true it fires way slower than any round but <laughs> the swing fire is significantly slower than some other ATGMs out there I keep saying ATGM destroyers I'm trying to just compare it to the tank destroyers but let's be honest at this tier every every AFV has some type of missile component you have the VBL tow you have the BVP which has two missiles you have the BMP which each tier 5 and tier 6 have one missile the BMDs so out of all those vehicles I still think it's the slowest so again blind fire onto that stingray I hope I hit him. I can't remember if I did or not. No, I did. It was I lost a shot, hit him. And then the Merkaba pulls all the way back. Our Bufords pull all the way back. And that's what makes this tank so hard to play. It relies incredibly. It like I know every tank relies a lot on its teammates. To an extent, like some TDs can spot for themselves, but you don't want to go out there and be active spotters, or you don't want to scout in a you know media, uh, an MBT. So sure, you're always relying on light tanks or AFEs to do that job for you. But this tank, more than any other one, needs scouts, needs active scouts, because it cannot adjust to certain areas. It cannot fire its missiles in every area because of where that launcher is. So it needs scouts in front of it at all times to be effective because there's a lot of guys spotting in the city there's a lot of action happening in the city but I can't go in there and fire my missiles will go nowhere or they'll hit a building it's too close range I need the space and right now the only people I can rely on for that are the Bufords and they're pulling back and trying to re-angle their offensive and so because of that I'm pretty much in the dark there's nothing I can do right now except look for targets that are already in cover and getting spotted by the people in the city. And so... Ugh. Sorry about that. See, it's so boring, I'm yawning. It's just a painful tank to play and watch. And that's why I think people hate it. It's like, it's not only bad enough you gotta wait 20 seconds per reload, but you gotta wait and wait and wait and hope to God you have active scouts I mean, the only way we did so well last game is because they had to come towards us. As you can see in a normal PvP game where the enemy team, if they choose to, can completely flank or avoid your position, they'll just do it, especially if they know the swing fire's up there. I don't think we were spotted, but if they know there's TD sniping and they know that they're out there, they're just not going to do it. That's why the Merkaba won't come around, and that's why I'm trying to now to reposition myself. don't want to kill myself, so I'm trying to find the edge of this cliff and just trying to drive around and see if I can at least get close enough to do any more damage. And while the mobility is fine, I lied about that in the earlier part of this, it's not horrible, it's pretty good. There's no way I'm going to get to that Merkaba in time before it's destroyed, so I try to angle back towards the city, maybe I can do that. And ultimately I can't do anything, the whole enemy team gets wiped out before I even make my decision what to do. And so. Again, the swing fire is too slow in every respect to be an effective tank destroyer. The missiles are too slow, its mobility is too slow, and it's just boring. It's ultimately a boring tank to play, and a horrifying tank to play against. So as you can see, we did hit the Stingray for 953 damage. Gives us 10,000 for first victory, but we were last place in both damage and XP. So... Not a great game, not very fun. Thank you so much for watching. Throw up a like if you enjoyed it, or subscribe to the channel if you want to see more vehicle showcases. See you next time.